Okay, welcome everyone to our final lab session for writing Wikipedia articles. Um, I see we have a good group showing up in the chat window, and I'm really um, I'm looking forward to I think especially continuing along the uh, the thread that we did in the last session uh, where we discussed uh, the open education. The outline of open education article that Jade started, um, and I think I've I've had a couple ideas about that that uh, that I'd like to run by you guys, and uh, maybe some of you have ideas as well. Of course, uh, we can always talk about any other articles that you're interested in, um, and I also have an announcement I'd like to make. Um, oh yes, Jade, I did see you you made some edits to Open Education too. So yeah, if we, if, if you'd like to. Uh, talk over that article too. We can we can do that as well. Um, I do want to start right off by pointing out a new badge that I just created. Um, so you know, I'm just I'm just sharing my screen. Oh, and I should say uh, Sarah is not able to join us today. She had a scheduling conflict, so uh, it's just us. Um, let's see. So. So this is the uh, the Wikisu Burba badge, which you're probably familiar with. This is the one that we've had since the first round of the course. Uh, but you know, it was it, it, we we started to realize that we really you know we've, while we've had some people earn this badge by doing really excellent work, um, it really is out of proportion to uh, I think what a lot of people have expected from the course. We've had many people participating in the course, doing lots of lots of cool stuff. And uh, and clearly learning a lot about Wikipedia, um, who aren't getting to the the 200 edit count or um, or making a substantial improvement to a specific article, but still doing really excellent work along the way. So I created this badge, the WikiSU Signator Badge, which is a certificate of completion of the course. Um, and you see you see at the end of the description here there are specific criteria. Um, but I think you'll find that everyone here uh, has certainly met these criteria, and I think uh, a number of the other people in our class as well. Um, Jade, of course, has already earned the the WikiSu Burbo badge, so you certainly would be eligible uh, to earn this one as well, Jade, if you like. Um, but anyone else in here who hasn't gotten through a, an article or something like that should um, should still apply for this one and still have something to show for the excellent work that you've done in the class. So uh, I would like to uh, I would like to I guess walk you through the steps of applying for that badge. Um, I'll do this I'll, I'll do this uh, kind of quickly and then if people have trouble with it and, and have any questions feel free to just send an email or something. Um, so in order to apply for the badge, you have to have an account um, at badges.p2pu.org. Uh, if you have an account just at p2pu.org, uh, I think that gets automatically turned into an account on badges.p2pu.org when you log in here. So, um, so you want to just you want to go to this address. I don't think you have to put in the en. That it'll detect that English is my language and automatically bring me to that. Uh, and then. You'll see a list of several badges. Um, there, I'm, I'm not see. This is, I think, just pulling up five random badges. So, if you don't see the um, the WikiSU Signator badge, which I don't right here, um, you would want to go directly to that URL. So, I'm going to post this. Actually, I'll put it in the. Let's see. That's the wrong one. So. Uh, I'm going to just put a link to this in the chat window for now, and I'll make sure that it's on our instruction pages soon. Um, there we go. So, oh, I see you're already asking me for it. So there it is. Um, and then I'm going to choose a different one that I have not earned to show you what it looks like to apply. So I'm going to click on this badge here. So you're looking at the description page, and you'll see submit a project for this badge. And then what you'll want to do is, uh, 
I don't think you have to upload a, an image, but it looks nicer if you do. So if there's a particular Wikipedia page that you have put some work into, um, or you know, an image that it's really it's it's entirely your choice. But you could take a screenshot of a Wikipedia page. That's what some people have done with the with the Burba badge, um, or just take a photo from that article. Um, or you might even just put the Wikipedia logo. Might be a, a good image. Uh, and then uh, for title, you could uh, put anything to describe the work that you've done in the class. Um, so that again, that could be a specific Wikipedia article if there's one where you focused your efforts, or you could just say um, Wikisu round three. Um, project URL is uh, I think you can you can just put the the class URL, so the same page that you go. Um, to, to find our main class page. And then for a description, I would just put in a sentence or so about I, I took this course in uh, August, September 2013 and learned about Wikipedia. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. Uh, and second thoughts, I think for a badge like this probably doesn't apply, but certainly if you have something you want to put in there, you can. I believe this field is required, so um, you know, you may need to say just no second thoughts if you don't have any. And for tags, uh, you'd probably just want to put in Wikipedia OER. It doesn't really, it doesn't. Uh, a lot of these fields are really more specific than we need to get with a badge like this. So, um, so don't worry if you don't have any grand ideas for tags. And then you would just click create a project. So this will submit the badge. And then I or someone else who's already earned the badge will need to approve it. So once you've earned the badge, you will probably get the occasional email uh, that lets you know that someone has applied for the badge. And please feel free to jump in and review their submission and approve them for it once you've earned the badge. Uh, so that's the way that something like this becomes self-sustaining. Um, in addition, I'm going to let's see. I'm, I'm going to make a version of this badge for Wikipedia. So um, let's see, Jade. I think I'm going to use your page as an example. So as you see, this this beige box here has the Wikisu Burba badge. So I'll create a similar one for the Wikisu Signator badge. And this is something that you can put on your user page, and it will link to the version on uh, on Peer to Peer University. So the pair of these is kind of nice because the um, the one on Peer to Peer University it it can only be awarded through this process, so it carries a little bit more uh, significance that you that you earn it because someone has to approve it. Um, so if you ever wanted to demonstrate kind of solidly that you've completed this class. This is the better link to point people to. But then the version on Wikipedia, um, which is uh, all it involves is just putting the code on your user page. So technically anyone could award it to themselves or something like that. So it doesn't really carry as much uh, as much authority as the one on P2PU, but it also is more visible. So um, it's it's nice to have both of those. So hopefully that is enough to get you going. I hope to have, uh, I guess, uh, at least three and maybe four. Jade, if you'd uh, like to have both of these badges on your pages, I hope to have some submissions uh, even this afternoon. So it would be nice to start giving this out. So with that, uh, let's, let's come back to Wikipedia. And uh, Jade, do you want to talk about what you're, what you're doing on the Open Education page, or is there anyone else who has a, a page they'd like to look at? I guess also I'm curious if uh, okay excellent well you've all you've all done really excellent work so I'm glad to come up with something that does acknowledge that um, I'm curious by the way does my voice sound any clearer than it usually does I was I was looking at a couple of the archived sessions and noticing it was a bit distorted so I have a different microphone I'm using today. Okay. All 
Okay, that's good to know. Thanks. So um, I'm going to pull up the outline of open education that we were working on before. And um, I, let's see. I I think we could we could there are a few different things we could do here. Actually, there's there's one specific idea I have that um, I think could be a, a fun exercise, and actually might be really good for a group of the size we seem to have today. Um, we could we could really get a lot done here with uh, with five people working on it. Is I uh, I ran across this. Navigation box that I had I had seen before, but I had actually forgotten. This was actually created a while ago by Lane Raspberry, who was one of our guests a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week. Um, so free and open movement. This is a little bit more general than what we've been talking about specifically with open education. But you see, he has um, open education as one of the elements, and so is open educational resources. So. This is something that uh, appears on a number of articles, but not really on so many in the open educational resources space. So I thought it might be uh, a fun exercise to go through and add this to several articles. Um, we can actually, anytime you're looking at a, a, a template or a navigation box like this, um, you can find out what pages already have it by clicking on what links here. And then if we scroll down, we're going to see that some of this includes a few. Uh, it, it has a redirect page from Open Movements. Uh, it has a, uh, I think I saw a user page. Yeah, so it's on someone's user talk page here. So uh, just to narrow it down a little bit more, we can restrict it to the article namespace. And so this is literally showing us just the Wikipedia articles that include this navigation box. So there are about well, there's fewer than 50. I can tell because there's no link on next 50 at the bottom. Uh, I guess that's maybe about 30 articles. And uh, I think for comparison, I'm going to open up our Communicate OER content page. So I think if we look at our list here, starting with open educational resources and then all of these different articles, I think we'd find that there are a number of those that are not on this list. So uh, it does have open educational resources. It does have open content. Um, but this new one, uh, outline of open education, does not have it and probably should. Right? If someone's looking for an outline of open education, they're probably thinking in a um, in sort of a structural way and trying to place the concept in context to other concepts. So let's at least put it on at the bottom of that article. So is there someone who'd like to do that? Maybe someone who hasn't um, hasn't been very active on Wikipedia recently and kind of needs to <laughs> roll up your sleeves and get back in? Oh, Teresa, I think I'd be really interested uh, to hear about the conference, maybe we can take a take a moment on that. So let's see. Do we have a volunteer who could take a crack at putting this template at the bottom of the outline of Open Education page? Oh come on, it's fun and easy. Someone, someone, let me know. Did someone volunteer? Okay, Jade, you're welcome too. But I know you've been pretty active on Wikipedia, um, so I guess if nobody else wants to, we could do that. I think you all, if, if while we're doing this, if you want to follow along, uh, log into your Wikipedia account and uh, and follow along what we're doing. I think we'll probably find a couple of other pages that we could add it to. So, um, 
so maybe we can get everyone involved. So Jade, do you know how to add a template like this? Uh, it's yes. So you're gonna okay. <laughs> so the the tricky thing about a template here, I'm gonna go back to the template page itself. Um, is well, the way that it's designed to work is that you just you're gonna put in the code, the the name of the template, but without the word template, and you're gonna put that between double squiggly brackets. So let's let's look at. I'm gonna go back to what links here. I'm going to sort of follow the process that you might follow if you wanted to add it and you didn't have me here to. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, but but let's say that I wasn't here talking you through it. Here's a way that you could sort of figure it out. So we're looking at pages that link to Open Nav Navbox, and now if you click on any one of those links, I'll click Open Patent. Just chose one at random. So here we see at the very bottom we see Free and Open Movements. So what we're going to do is look at the code that pulls it in on this page, and then we're going to do the same thing on the outline of open education. And just to easily see only that bottom section, instead of clicking edit source for the whole page, I'm going to click edit source just for the references section. Even though this isn't references, it's, that's the, the section header that's closest to it, so it should come up within that. And there it is. So we have so this is the references code, and then below that we have these two uh, navigation boxes. And here I'll, I'll do show preview so we can see just what this part looks like. Okay, so you see the references header. Um, we would see the list, list of references on the page, but since we don't have the actual footnotes in this, when we're just looking at this section, it's not showing anything else. And then it shows the intellectual Property activism nav box and the free and open movements nav box. So we're going to copy this code which Jade had just uh, put in the chat window, and we'll put that on the outline of open education. So yes, put it before the category templates. It's uh, this is not critical. Uh, this is sort of just a, a convention on Wikipedia. Category templates will work when you put them anywhere on the page, and they don't actually show up on the page. They just um, the category the, the the category code just puts the article in those categories, so it creates this box at the bottom, and that's kind of here at the bottom, no matter where the category code is in the page. But by convention, typically the categories are the very last thing on the page. So I'm going to go back to outline of open education. So you could do that just by editing the section the way that we just did. So you, you would click Edit Source on the References section, and you see a pretty similar uh, page here. So you have the, the ref list code that will pull in the footnotes, and then you have the specific reference that's not uh, woven in as a footnote. Okay, so there it is, Open Navbox. And I'm going to go back to that. You're saying it's not showing up, but I'll bet it is. I bet that's just because I pulled up the page. Yeah, I think I just pulled up the page before you had saved or before it was a, it was a timing issue. So good job. That looks great. So we already that's a, a way to really pull in lots of information into the page and, and uh, get us going on this project. So we've, I think that we've already made this a much more useful article just by adding that in. So. You may remember I brought up the idea of nav boxes before on the class talk page, um, suggesting that this entire topic, the outline of open education, might or might not make more sense as a nav box. So, um, you know, I think as we're working on this, that that might be something to keep in mind: is do we want to just present this more in a form, in this compact form, and put it on every article relating to open education instead of having a separate article? Um, I have the feeling that might be a Discussion we come back to at some point. So, uh, has anyone else had uh, further thoughts about this this page and what we can add to it? 
Therese, I think you were pointing out um, you brought in a number of these uh, these sources the last time. Do you have any other reference materials that we might look to to build this out? I'm not sure if this is working. I don't know if you can hear me. Sure can. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I have the privilege of working with a lot of <clears throat> um, projects and research in um, in open education. So, um, I mean, I've actually got access to, to tons of material. <laughs> Um, as I said, I've just come in from a conference, a learning technology conference, and so um, my mind has been on a zillion other things, so I'm just trying to pull my thoughts together. But um, Would you, you know, like if, to if could you tell us a bit about the conference in general and kind of lead us into that? I think that would be... Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, it was, it was, a, it was interesting. Um, it was the uh, Association for Learning Technology. Um, which has existed for 20 years, so this was the, the 20th anniversary. And um, we had um, Dame Wendy Hall, who helped Tim Berners-Lee to put together the first um, uh, hyperlinks and um, kind of put together the H, um, you know, the WWW. She gave one of the keynotes, so that was quite, you know, pretty impressive. Well, one of the things, <laughs> This group of learning technologists will often blend and overlap with people who are interested in open education. And I'm one of those that, that is in both camps. So um, one of the things that just kept coming up again and again in the conference is what is a MOOC? And we're going to have to reclaim the, the term MOOC because where it has gone, where that term has gone, has gone into things that are not open. So it can't really be a MOOC. It would have to be a mock, you know. <laughs> um, and um, uh, even uh, courses that are not free, courses that are not massive. So it just seems that um, that term is being kind of used and abused um, by, I don't know, companies that are, um, you know, just kind of wanting to jump on the bandwagon. And um, so I can kind of relate to the difficulty that, that Jade mentioned of trying to write an article and not even being sure of how to put this definition. <laughs> so um, now I, I have to say that the you know one of the first MOOCs it goes back to Stephen Downs. One, it, it can, you know, the idea of the connectivism actually goes back to George Siemens, but Stephen Downs was right in there with him. Um, Stephen Downs is from Canada, and he came out and gave our final keynote which I listened to on the train because I wanted to come home and join in this session. <laughs> so I left early, but I listened to Stephen on the, wow. on the train. <laughs> I'm honored. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I was on my iPad with 3G on the train going through the Midlands, and hey, it worked, you know. So I got Stephen, I got something to tell you guys. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Well, ma mainly, um, he just... Basically, he just was um, taking the stance that um, you know open education has to has to retain the openness, and um, he didn't you know he didn't kind of give any call to action. We've got to reclaim the term or anything like that. But basically, he just reiterated that um, there is a place for open education. There is a place for open courses, and. Um, he didn't even really go into the difference between a C MOOC or an X MOOC or anything like that. He just kind of avoided it and just stuck on the original, um, you know, open education ideals. So I guess bottom line is, um, in our article, we, we, we need to put where it, where it started, where the MOOC idea started, and document as best we can, I guess, um, how quickly it's um, been kind of co-opted to mean other things, but you know, in the realm of open education, the original meaning was was this, and um, you know, and we should be clear about that. So I can say that much. Okay. Well, let's let's get that let's get that idea on the talk page. That seems like a really important point. Um, and I, I could do this if you like, or uh, if if you could just leave a note at the bottom of the talk page, then that's something that we could easily come back to. Um, do you mind 
doing that, Trace? Great. Sure. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Less things for me to click on while I talk. <laughs> Thanks. Um, well, that that's that's wonderful. That's uh, I, I really I think that this idea of of I think this is a really timely issue in this movement. Uh, it keeps coming up. This this uh, this. You know, it's 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 a difficult issue to put into a Wikipedia article when you have sort of a, a question of definition. Um, that's exactly the sort of thing that, it, it, like, Wikipedia likes to define things clearly. Uh, and when there's controversy around something, or when there are different ideas of how something is is defined, uh, that can be one of the hardest things to sort of find the right language around. But at the same time, it's it's. Uh, it, it's a really good use of Wikipedia. If if we can effectively express to readers who might not know a whole lot about the topic um, what those controversies are or what those disagreements are, that's going to really help them uh, interpret a lot of the other stuff that they find on the web. Right? If they find if if if, if we can explain in the MOOC article that um, that the the origins are very much in the open movement, um, and that open educational practices have been a, a strong value with MOOCs, but that that's something that isn't really being carried forward in some of the more corporate versions of them. Well, then, if they read that and then go and and look at a, a page on you know Coursera or one of the one of the big MOOC pages and see MOOCs talk about one way. And then they go to another page, uh, maybe on the School of Open or something like that, and see MOOCs discussed in a different way. They'll understand uh, how those fit together and not be as as confused by it. So to me, that really goes to the heart of what Wikipedia exists to do: to help people um, sort of form a, a framework for their understanding. So I'm really excited to. Find a way to, to to get that both into this outline article that we've started, and also um, to to get back to the MOOC article, which you know is something we've discussed many times in this class. And there's been a lot of sort of nibbling around the edges on this article um, in the in the last few months. But uh, I don't know. It seems like the issue is still there. So uh, hopefully, we can make some progress on that as well. So Trace, I don't. I think your microphone is still on. I don't know if you're uh, wanting to oh, come back yes. in or if you just left it on before. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I was. I was. No, I, no, I was typing into the talk page. So I was kind of gathering my thoughts for that now. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, Great. but yeah, I, I I agree with you. Actually, um, this this might be kind of outside of the scope of 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 this project particularly. But when Dame Wendy Hall was speaking about the history of the World Wide Web. Um, I wanted to grab her her whole um, presentation and just kind of start forming, um, you know, making sure that everything on 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 the uh, in Wikipedia about the World Wide Web was, um, you know, had the, the the dates and things that she was referring to because mm -hmm. it's just so valuable to hear from someone who was there while it was happening, who was it was under her fingers as well as you know Tim Berners Lee, so. I, it just made me realize how important it is to be capturing these things and putting them into Wikipedia. Right, right. Um, and I would think that that um, you know that's a, a the 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 sort of oral history or like the uh, the the not oral history, but the idea of of capturing information like that from experts or from people who know things from personal experience. Is something that yes. can be a little tricky on Wikipedia because, yes. um, you know, because of the whole reliable source concept. But yes. uh, if if she submitted a talk to a you know to a to a conference like that and it was accepted, that very fact, you know, the fact that she was put forward as an expert in that context, in itself gives that presentation a lot more authority than it would if it was right. just posted on her own blog. So that's a really good thing to capture, um, mm. especially if she's especially if she's published it somewhere that we can link to it on the web. Mm. Mm. Thanks for that. So that's what you put in your talk page when you add the stuff. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, you put it in the talk page and also you know, try to capture that in the, the way that you cite it. So that's, that's where using those citation templates is yeah. really valuable um, because you, know, you, you want to you express that it's from the proceedings of this conference um, mm. you know, actually in the citation so it's clear to the reader that it's, that it's a more formal piece. Yes. Yes, Jade. So yeah, yeah, exactly. If there's a if there's a paper that accompanies that talk, that's even better. Um, but even if there's not, I think you know a video um, that expresses in the in the citation that it was the keynote talk from a certain con or a, that it was a, a talk at a certain conference uh, is is worthwhile as well. So, Therese, maybe you can uh, include something about that, and if you have one, maybe a link to her talk, or at least to the page announcing her talk, or something like that, uh, so that we can track it down more easily in the future. That's great. Okay. And I would do the same with Stephen Downs, since he was the invited Excellent. keynote. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So Cami, Rosemary, any you you've both been a little quiet today. Anything on your mind? Is this interesting stuff to you, or is there anything else you'd like to come back to? Uh, this is Rosemary. This is all very interesting. I was having a, a little hard time following the template process before I okay. I find that I I get confused about all the different places where things are, and I can't find them fast enough. So. I have a lot of just playing around to do that I haven't done yet with all of the options for Wikipedia. But the main thing that I would like uh, to to be able to get out of today is is if we just would be working on this article together after the class, um, the best places to work on that to be reminded of that would help me so that I can when I have a chance to weigh in or put my toe in, um, you should be sure to know where I'm going. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm glad you asked. That's uh, that's a really important thing to discuss as we wrap up. Um, I think the uh, the 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 best place to continue is just still our class discussion page. Um, so this address will be uh, if if we have another iteration of the course, uh, this will be. Repurposed to, you know, the, the, we'll we'll have our, our new students using this page as well, but that's fine, right? And I think Jade, I think you could probably even speak to this, right? Because Jade was a student in the last round um, and has stayed very active here on our class talk page, and it's been it's been really nice to have that. Um, you know, we're starting to get a range of people with different amounts of experience, people who are brand new in the new classes, and people who've been editing for a few months. So I think that's your number one resource, Rosemary. Um, and if we are successful in starting up a wiki project open education, um, that's something that we would certainly announce here and on the uh, we would be sending out an email as well. I think uh, we're, we're probably going to want, uh, we'll, we'll probably send around an email Asking a few questions of you guys about that because I think anyone who take, took this course is uh, you're among the more important stakeholders in that since you're you're some of the people who are most active in uh, in this topic area. So that it may be that we kind of migrate from using the class talk page to the Wiki Project Open talk page, but that's something that'll happen gradually and uh, will be amply announced by email. Uh, and of course, if you're if you're looking for a specific person that you've worked worked with, um, leaving a note on their talk page or going to their user page and sending an email through it is is always a good option too. So, um, you know, let's say you've been working on a project with uh, with with Sarah. Um, once you if you see her signature on this page, you can just click on her name. You, you could click on her user talk page and leave a message here, or you could uh, go to email this user and send her a private message through email. 
So that's by filling in this form, which I would imagine you probably all did early on in the class when getting in contact with your teammates. Does that cover it pretty well, Rosemary? Okay. Well, we will be sure to get that info out by email. Uh, I also wanted to ask if uh, the last time around we had a we had a class reunion. As I recall, I got a little messed up on the date, uh, which was unfortunate. <laughs> but um, if you guys would like, we could schedule something probably about a month out, so maybe in early October, where we could just jump back in here in this familiar format and talk about anything that you've been working on in the meantime and look at what else has happened with the open education articles. Is that something you guys would enjoy? Okay, well let's let's plan on that and let's pick a date right now. I think it makes sense for it to be either a, be at one of our regular class or lab times. So um, I don't know if anyone has a preference. I, a month from now, either of those dates will be fine for me. Let's see, what is today? The 12th. So um, I know the 13th, there may be something I, I need to do. Uh, let me just, I'm going to pull up. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just pull up the calendar and see what the dates look like. So the 8th is a Tuesday and the 10th is a Thursday. So should we maybe look at Tuesday the 8th at the same time? Does that work for everyone here? Uh, okay. So Rosemary, um, do you know, does, does Trish teach on both the Tuesdays and the Thursdays? I'm guessing she does because I haven't seen her in I think any of the sessions this time around. Oh, nuts! Well, that's too bad. I so well. I think we should probably stick with this time just because it's it's what works for most people in the class. Um, but we also will be putting together uh, a few editing events at different times for the class. So I'm sure we'll have something that is uh, that work that works for Trish, and maybe I'll check in with her individually to make sure that we do. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing that up again, Rosemary. So let's say uh, Tuesday the eighth, uh, eight to nine a.m. Pacific, which is that's my my time for this, but the same time that we've been meeting. And I'll be sure to send out. Some emails about that. Yes, uh, Jade. So, um, if you have a moment, maybe you could put it on the uh, on the class page right now, and I can uh, I can get back to it. Otherwise, I can do it when we're done with with this call. Great. Thank you. So let's see if um, do, do, does anyone else want to try the um, try adding the template to a page because I think we have a couple others that don't have it yet. So this open educational resources policy does not have that free and open movements template. Um, I think open courseware might not have it. Is not on open courseware. So I'm going to just put these links in the chat window. And I'm going to paste that, I'm going to put that code in again.
So you just put that bit of code right above the categories. Oh, okay. So there's yeah, there's no. Okay, great. Thanks, Trace. Um, let's see on the class page. So tables of contents uh, show up depending on a few factors. So let me just pull up our page. I think that I think on this page, I think we turned it off explicitly. So yeah. So this this line here, the two underscores and no TOC that turns off the table of contents and I think we did that because the page was looking very blocky and confusing and we thought that it might be easier for people to just scroll to what they need. Um, so I think Jade, I, I, I would think where we have this big click here in the middle, I would just replace that with um, uh, class reunion. The, the big text could say class reunion October 8th. And actually the link can stay the same because it will be the same link to the Blackboard session. So um, yeah, and I would say this is a good example of where uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter that you get it exactly perfect if you uh, you know, as long as you put the information in the page um, and then you kind of see how it looks, uh, you can come back, I can come back, and we can kind of make it, uh, you know, refine it a little bit over a couple of edits. I think that our front, actually, we still have about 15 minutes here. If you, if you guys don't mind, um, I'd really be interested in any sort of general feedback on the course. Uh, what's leading me to that right now is this sort of constant, uh, I, I feel like our front page has been a bit confusing during this round of the course um, compared to how we've done it in the past. It's something that Sarah and I have talked about a couple of times, but we also haven't had a real clear vision of how to make it better. So. Um, is there anything, do you guys have any suggestions of how, in general, we could have made this course go better? Did we, um, was it generally pretty clear what you needed to do next from the front page? Were the emails coming out at a good time? Would you rather get the emails earlier? Um, really anything. Um, sounds like someone is turning on their mic. Sounds like someone's maybe having a little difficulty with their mic. Yeah. Hello? I think I can hear you, Rosemary. Yeah. Okay, sorry, that was some confusing down here. I, because I'm so new to this, I think there was just so there were so many pages and so many things. For example, when you did the template thing today, I thought, oh, where did that come from? And then, of course, once you did it, I knew I had seen it before. But because I I don't have a lot of time to do this, it's, it's relearning all of the where all the little pathways, um, and so I'm not very quick with them. Um, I think perhaps. Um, it's not even about the top page. I think your directions are pretty clear. Uh, I think with some labs, it might be good to actually, as you've done today, actually work on um, doing something and have people try it. But I wasn't prepared to try it today because I didn't have anything opened up and I wasn't even sure where I was going. So it wasn't shyness so much as I didn't just know what to push. So, um, so some. I okay. think that might have helped me. I know when I worked a little with Trish on something that she just said, well, just go do this now. And so I did it, and I got able to do that. So I think a little, I, you're, you're very open with the labs, and that's good because it's whatever people are working on. But it, I think it would have helped me more to have actually worked through things more. At a very basic okay. level. 
in a lab um, in contrast to building things that a lot of people who've had more experience, which I really appreciated, uh, can do more easily. Mm -hmm. So just having a having a um, a little a task that that we can do on the shared screen and walk through together. Yeah, something like that. Even if it were just half of the lab, so more experienced people could would not have to sit through something that they knew already how to do a lot, or maybe they could help. It's, it's fine sure. um, either way, but I think that would yeah, or we could have more experienced people do it in to, to try more um, even outside of the class. Okay, that's good. Good feedback, and uh, I'm sorry we didn't think to do more of that during the class, but it makes a lot of sense. I guess, uh, in particular, too, the, the, there's um, the the week three session, um, which is the one where uh, where I introduced the final project, and the one where I went through the featured article and good article, the different quality ratings on Wikipedia. Um, we had some feedback the last time around that that was really a, a sort of an avalanche of detailed information, uh, and I I tried to approach it a bit differently this time, but I have the sense that it might have still been a little overwhelming. Um, any any comments on that? Does anyone remember that session particularly? Well, I'll grab the mic, and yeah, I think um, that one was a bit um, a bit overwhelming for me as well. I don't, I don't really feel with everything else. Kind of like Rosemary said, um, it's it's a bit, you know, it's a it, it's a lot to take in. But I I felt like I could, you know, kind of stumble along with editing this and um, trying a list or you know the different ideas, but. But that one, I don't really remember many of the concepts, <laughs> so it must have been uh, kind of too much for me. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to keep working on that session then if we do this again and, and uh, try to rethink that and maybe do more of a, more of a high level overview. <laughs> it's really it's a bad time in the class to be, uh, <laughs> to be chasing people away right when we assign the final project. And I feel like that's maybe what's, what's happened. Uh, you know, Pete, the thing I'm also thinking of is there's, as I've tried to watch this, for me there's two things. It's about how do we add good content to a really important resource, and then what's all of the things that if you were in a publishing house you'd be doing copy editing and whatever beyond that is, how to do the markup language and things that people are rightly very concerned about but aren't really about adding content. It's about the way we add content. So. I'm more at the end as a person who works in university in my life. It's more about finding the right content and then figuring out what sort of um, required citation format or whatever the group is I'm sending these to. So the combination of these sometimes I think gets me startled maybe is the word. I'm not sure. It's like I can't think about the ideas anymore because I need to focus on what's the protocol. And so. I think you do a good job of trying to deal with both of those. I, it's just that within a short six-week period, it's it's a lot to try to cover, and I don't know if that might be a way to separate things to have something that really helps people get started with editing something without needing to know very much about the whole philosophy of Wikipedia, and then something else that helps us to really see how uh, because I appreciated seeing how careful the the community is about trying to be really clear, uh, so I don't want to miss that out. It just it seems like a lot happening at once. Okay, so so maybe some really really basic specific tasks early on that just get people active. Uh, maybe I th I think maybe maybe building out our user pages, maybe having. Um, Having some more specific suggestions of how to add a user box and how to add a photo and things like that, and sort of using your own user page as a, as as a place to to just get a little bit more familiar with editing the wiki, and also maybe the the class talk page, maybe encouraging um, 
So I think I, I think that using the class talk page is, is is probably a good way to get at that. But I but I have I've sort of struggled with how to stimulate discussion there. I mean I would I would really love to see our class talk page be a place where people are very casual and and uh, you know and and just just chat a lot. Um, there's you know there's nobody else that's going to bother if there's too much going on there. And if people want to just say um, you know I was you know, I opened a newspaper today, and there was an interesting article that had to do with education. You know, without even there being a specific question or a specific idea, that's the kind of thing I'd like to see on the talk page, um, and I think would maybe get people in that more comfortable mode. Uh, but I'm not really sure how to stimulate it. Is that? Is, do you think, that, Rosemary? Do you think that would, would that kind of thing would? Like in the early sessions and maybe the first couple of weeks would kind of help get people to a point where they're a little more comfortable. Um, in the yes, no, I don't know exactly how to do it with the logistics of the computer, but if there was some notice, I, I get notices about Twitters and Facebooks and all these sorts of things, but um, I know just having it, um, like that it's available out there, isn't enough to get me involved. I have a lot of things challenging my time and. But I do read my email all the time, so uh, I appreciate when you send stuff out that way. I then I open it up. Um, it might just be on your end in terms of us as students. If you get more emails of saying something interesting is happening on the talk page, then I would go there and look at it. I'm not as likely just to have it on my list to go there. That may be a, a crutch, but as a, for a beginner, it seems like that's that's very inviting, and that would. I know that would make me probably say more because I would know where to go right then and, and be able to start talking about things. Okay, great. I'm I'm trying to capture some of this in the uh, in the Etherpad. Um, so. Building out your user page and engaging on class discussion page, and then I think um, so using maybe the emails that we're already sending out, but putting very specific suggestions in there. Like this is under discussion on the on the talk page. Please, uh, you know, say yes or no to this simple survey question or something like that. Like like. Very specific prompts to what to do on the on the class discussion page. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, that's very helpful feedback, and I think aligns pretty well with other things that we've heard and not necessarily known what to do with. So. Every time we've done this, the the class, I think we've learned a little bit more, and I think they've been, I think they've gotten a bit better each time. Uh, it also gets a little bit more confusing on on our end how to weave all of these good ideas into uh, into a six week package. But um, it's been it's been really fun to uh, to work on. Can I just mention that um, actually I. Um, in, in the conference I was just at, I gave this as, a, as an example of a good online course. I didn't call it a MOOC, I called it a LOOC, a little online course, uh, open, a little open online course. Yeah. And um, um, I just, I gave it as a, as a good example because, um, because um, it's kind of like the Berber badge was specifically um, identified as Kind of like a goal to to do, and um, so actually it was nice to, to to come here today and and hear you say that actually that was an, am, an ambitious goal. And yeah, I thought it was quite ambitious. <laughs> so it's nice to hear about this other badge. But um, but to have like that clear goal and something like the badge or certificate um, for the things that are done in the online course is um, is a really good thing. And then. And I like what what Rosemary said, and that just ties into what I felt was a was a really useful session last Tuesday, 
when, yeah, we just all got in there and started typing. And, um, you know, I, maybe that's a little bit hard to always orchestrate well for every class, but I thought that was great. It, it just gave us some, you know, that's what the course is about. So we were just getting our hands dirty and, and trying it. And so I guess, some, you know, maybe orchestrating some more kind of events like that that are right on kind of stepping us toward the badge and stepping us toward the goals of the course. Yes. So yeah, that's so my maybe uh, maybe some some smaller uh, some badges for for very specific things in the class so that you're you're earning a couple of badges along the way towards the the course badge. Okay. Um, do we want to can can we maybe talk about a couple of specific badges we could do that would that would help me? So um, I mean we could we could have like a user page badge. Um, I'm just I'm just trying to think of a couple of things that I, that I can come back to, and um, um, so what's, does anyone have any ideas of things that I mean I guess like even uploaded a photo that was one of the homework assignments, um, added a citation. Do you think this sort of level of I mean these are much more specific. Uh, tasks than we've assigned badges to before, but uh, but I think would make really clear goals for students as they're going along. Okay. All good. All right. Well, I think uh, I think this has brought us pretty much to the end of. Oh, Cammy, you like that idea too. Good. Pretty much brought us to the end of the hour. So I think actually this. So your use of the word scaffolding actually, <laughs> I I want to. That this this reminds me of something that I, I don't think I've mentioned in this course that I, I think is a really neat. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close out on on this idea. Uh, this is something. Let's see. This is something I put in my blog a while back. Um, actually, I'm going to just. Um, let's see. There we go. So this is, a, this is a blog post. I'll put in the the URL in the chat window. And it's sort of it's a. I, I kind of built off a couple of ideas here. I used a specific um, example of a Wikipedia article that I'd worked on, um, and then at the bottom here, I talked about some research that Ed Chi talked about in his um, in his keynote in the I think the 2012 uh, Wikisim conference. So this is a slide from his presentation, and uh, this was a study that he did where it. He basically he had people. Each each line is a um, is a user. Oh, let's see. I have to advance through to get to that slide. Um, and he had each person research something online. That's pretty deep in here. There we go. Um, so each each line is a user, and then going from left to right uh, is going through time, and the different Squares indicate different kinds of activities. So the yellow W's mean that they're looking at Wikipedia. And the interesting thing to me here is that, so he basically he would give each person a research task and then observe what they did as they were they were researching that. So the interesting thing to me, and that he called out with this, is that there's a really high concentration of yellow W's at the left, meaning that people tended to start out with Wikipedia to scaffold their understanding of a topic and then move to more specific topics as they as they went forward with that. And that's really the purpose that Wikipedia is designed to fill. Um, an encyclopedia is meant to be a general reference work and that's why there's all of that uh, attention to references and sourcing is so that people can find more authoritative, more detailed information as they delve into a topic. So I think it's it's nice to see that the way that people, at least in this study, uh, actually use Wikipedia is really well aligned with 
what Wikipedia is trying to accomplish. So, yeah, you, uh, Cammy, your use of the word scaffolding really uh, just <laughs> just kind of triggered one of my one of my favorite little bits of uh, research about Wikipedia. So, thought I'd share that. Anyway, uh, it is the end of the hour, so let's wrap this up. But I look forward to seeing you guys again at the reunion on October eighth, and uh, I'll reach out to the other students as well, and hopefully we'll have a nice session then. So, and I'll be watching our class talk page. Uh, as we go forward too, so if you're still working on an article and you want to report your progress or you want to ask a question, feel free always to drop in there. Thank you. And yes, I think Sarah will be able to join us for that. So we'll see you soon. <laughs>